recording. Okay, all right. So tonight we're going to talk about the International Pagan Pride Project. I thought it was something that not all people really know the whole history about it. So we'll spend most of our time on that. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the history of Mabon. And Chris is then going to take us through a sweet little craft. And we'll get ready for tomorrow's all day event. So nobody really knows who first used the term pagan pride. Its name owes its origins to the gay pride movement. And certainly it's a term that reaches far beyond any single organization. It can't be copyrighted. The founders have always felt it would be a breach of honor and decency to copyright it. There are rumors of single local events using the name Pagan Pride as early as 1992, but there is no documentation to prove that. The Pagan Pride Project is the first organized and documented movement to support and encourage public celebrations of Pagan Pride in communities all over the world. The history of the Pagan Pride Project started with one woman, Cecilina Wrightsworth. Her name is now Cecilina Dewar, she got married, um, whose participation in Pagan Awareness League, or otherwise known as PAL, uh, the organization founded after the Witches League for Public Awareness eliminated their state representative program in 1997. So during her time as a member of PAL, uh, Cecilina proposed a formal program to the PAL membership and director to facilitate celebrations of Pagan Pride on a local level and to be called Pagan Pride Day. From the beginning, uh, her vision of what Pagan Pride Day should be included several departures from the celebrations common to the Pagan community. Her proposal included a central core of what has become the Pagan Pride Project, three elements designed to increase community, goodwill, and public relations towards paganism. And that would be a public ritual celebration open to pagans, non-pagans, passers-by, and onlookers, uh, press releases and public relations activities designed to encourage positive media portrayal of pagans and paganism, and then food and materials drive for a local charity, food bank, shelter, or refuge to symbolize both pagan responsibilities to their town, city, or state, and in honor of the various Thanksgiving holidays common to most pagan traditions held around fall equinox. And we are meeting all three of those. We're having public ritual and celebrations tomorrow in the park. Yeah. Um, everybody's going to be able to see what we're doing and anybody can just walk in and take part. Uh, we have advertised in several places and we are collecting food and materials for four leggeds instead of humans, but that's our thing. So we're pretty much meeting all those. It was in September 19, 1998, <coughs> with the help of a dedicated group of local coordinators that the first ever Pagan Pride Day was officially held. There were 18 celebrations that first year, 17 in the United States and one in Canada. Unfortunately, PAL soon dissolved and they reformed as PACT, a Pagan Civil Rights Coalition which has no relationship to the Pagan Pride Project. While Pagan Pride Day is set each year, Pride events are actually scheduled within a window to either side of the date. 2000 also brought Pagan Pride its first national press coverage in the New York Times and Associated Press. 2001 was a breakout year, but also a year deeply touched with sorrow as the tragedy of 9-11 affected all of us. Pagan Pride had its first events in Europe, including Rome, Southampton, UK, and Lisbon, and the first events in South America in Brasilia and Sao Paulo. Numbers in 2003 and 2004 continued to increase. For the first time, attendance broke 30,000 in 2003 and 40,000 in 2004. I see a pattern here. <laughs> over 20 tons of food and goods were collected over this time, and Pride events were held in every state in the U.S., as well as a continued strong presence in Italy and Brazil. Portugal joined the list of countries that have held Pride events, and also in 2003, the Pagan Pride Project became a regular supporter of Circle Sanctuary's Lady Liberty League and sent a representative to the League's annual meeting at Pagan Spirit Gathering. 2007 celebrated 10 years of Pagan Pride Day, and the rest is history, continuing to grow year after year. The mission statement of the Pagan Pride Project is to foster pride in pagan identity through education, activism, charity, and community. The Pagan Pride Project tries to keep its purpose balanced through the inspirations of air, fire, water, and earth. 
air represents education. And the belief is that we're never going to be able to practice our spiritual paths openly if we don't give the public accurate information about what we do and what we don't do. Fire represents activism. People aren't necessarily going to go out of their way to find out what we as pagans really do or believe in. We have to have the courage to act on our convictions and do what we need to do. Water stands for charity. We know that what we do returns to us. We need to demonstrate this by offering compassion to all our communities where it is needed. When we share our own abundance, we show that we trust the gods to share abundance with us in return. And earth stands for community. We're never going to be able to practice openly if we don't know anyone else in our local pagan communities. We need to weave networking, webs in our cities, in our towns, and in our rural areas. We need these webs to support one another. That support will also show those who will restrict our practice and our beliefs that we are not just a few isolated wackos, but a growing congregation of people who adhere to a faith that, while different, is as valid as their own. And wacko is not my word, it's the Pagan Pride International's word. <laughs> yeah, but we're, we're at least a good kind of crazy. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> so the Pagan Pride logo is comprised of different symbols. So on the left side, top to bottom, we have... The yin and yang symbol, which is a sign of balance from Eastern philosophies, but used by many pagans, also showing that there's a little bit of darkness and light and a little bit of light and darkness. The Celtic cross or equal armed cross is again a sign of balance, often symbolizing the four cardinal directions in classical elements. The Thor's hammer, a symbol of Asatru in heathens and Norse pagans. The triple goddess symbol, the waxing, full, and waning moons, symbolizing the goddess as maiden, mother, and crone. The Eye of Horus, an Egyptian pagan symbol. The Venus of Wollendorf, this figurine dates from 24,000 to 22,000 BCE, which for those that don't know stands for before the Common Era, and is a mother goddess symbol. Yeah, because uh, there used to be BC and AD for before Christ and Anno Domini in the year of the Lord. Now they use BCE for before Common Era and CE for Common Era. Uh, the Ankh, which is an Egyptian pagan symbol symbolizing eternal life. And the right side, top to bottom, the pentacle, the most common symbol used in Wicca or witchcraft. Its five points symbolize air, fire, water, earth, and spirit in the circle of eternity. The triskelion, used in Celtic paganism, a symbol of the Celtic elements, earth, sea, and sky. The Celtic cross, a symbol of Celtic and Gnostic paganism. Stone megaliths, like Stonehenge, a druid symbol. The green man, consort to the triple goddess, the god of nature. The Enneagram, a New Age symbol of interconnectedness. The Tree of Life from the Kabbalah, a Jewish mystic tradition appropriated into Western magic and occult systems. Pretty much have everything covered in their logo. Right? All are welcome. It's a little of everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, as we know, this year the Grove will hold an all day Pagan Friday event at Easterlin Park. We're offering all day workshops and fellowships with meals included. Activities begin at 10 and at 6.30. We are asking for a donation of $20 per person, if you can, to help with some of the costs, as we did pay for the gazebo and all the food and everything. Uh, if you want to give your donations today, Birch can accept those. If not, we can certainly give you donations tomorrow when you arrive. Uh, There will be a quiz later. We hope you all brought a number two pencil. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Does anyone know anything else about the Pagan Pride Project that we may not have mentioned? <laughs> going once, going twice. Sold. Okay. okay. Oh, wait. wait, I know something. Yes. Our, our own um, Ash the Silent made one of the first um, posters for the Pagan Pride po Project. Oh, wow. Very cool. Very cool. Member of our community. Yeah, so that's, that's awesome. awesome. Is, is Bill involved with that, too? Bill did a few of them, too. But Ash was, yeah. Ash, Ash, yeah. Ash did quite a few of them. She yeah. did, she did yeah. a lot of the posters for a lot of yeah. events. Really nice. 
We were afraid. She did a lot of awesome posters for the events. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they were awesome. Yeah. I've seen right. <laughs> so, that was so cool. Okay. All right. So we're going to go a little bit into the history of Mavon, just to give everyone a little bit of an education. Then we're going to do a fun little project afterwards where we're actually going to be making Mavon fairies. So oh, wow. they're totes cool. adorable. It's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> That's good. They can bless my new car. There you go. And uh, so with that, Mabon is a relatively recent term for the neo-pagan celebration of the autumn equinox. This is the second of the three harvest festivals across border between Lunasa and Samhain. Our modern traditions are reminiscent of the ancient festivals of the second harvest. This is the pagan Thanksgiving, the time for sharing, reflection, balance, and celebration of the bounty of life. Mabon is a time to meditate on the fruits of our own labors as well, what have you sown this year? Are you reaping healthy and constructive fruits, or are you paying the price for not nurturing your seeds? This is the time to start to consider what we want to change and the gardens we will plow next year. Almost all cultures had gods or goddesses associated with this time. All of the celebrations were called by different names. Ancient Rome had Pomona, the goddess of fruit trees. The ancient Greeks had Persephone, who was also known as Prosperpina, as well as Demeter, as also Bacchus. The early Semites had Adonis, the Egyptians had Hathor, Osiris, and Isis. The Sumerians had Inanna, who was the most important of the Sumerian goddesses during that time. <coughs> the Babylonians had Ishtar, the Hindus Durga, the Norse Freya, Freyr, and Thor. The Celts, Mabon Ap Modron, the Child of Light, Caridun, Sernunos, and the Green Man. This is a time of community and kinship with the earth and with all her creatures. It is also a time of kinship with all beings of the world. As such, pagans offer special honor to the dead and our spirit allies at this time of year. So we thought we would keep the presentations kind of short so that we and most of our time having fun with the fairies. There you go. We're going to be having fun with the fairies with a fairy. So let's do this. <laughs> That's my one obligatory gay joke. This is how they grow the fruit. Hey, I'm a native Floridian. This is literally how they grow the fruit in Florida, folks. <laughs> so we'll give Chris a minute to get set up. All right. Cool. Um, I guess what we'll do is we'll go ahead and um, yeah. clear the table. Yeah, we'll move all this. Uh, do you want me to move that? I can move that without them going out okay. so you can blow them out later. Okay. Oh, I trust your power. Ta -da. Uh, we do have hot glue guns for everybody, so if you don't have a hot glue gun, we have ones that we can share. So, you know, for Venice Clint Kindergarten, remember to share the clay. <laughs> what about eating the glue? If not, we have a naughty. We have a naughty. Yeah, don't eat the glue. <laughs> no eating or sniffing the glue. This I want to hear more about the naughty. Just took all the fun out of it. You know, <laughs> I'm going home. <laughs> I want to hear more about the naughty part. Oh, it's not that exciting. Oh, oh my God. God. Glue. It's yes, not glue. fun. Okay. So. Basically, for the uh, building your fairy project, we have this for the hair, for the fairies, so you can pick whatever color you want and use it. Uh, the felt balls are literally going to be the heads of the fairies. Um, you, and if you have like a special oil blend that you do, you can actually <coughs> consecrate it by dabbing your oil on it. So if you have a Mabon blend or anything like that, you can actually let it absorb into this. These little acorn tops are going to be the hat that goes on the top of the fairy's head. <laughs> These leaves are going to be the wings, and the and the pine cones. Yeah, I'm pretty. The pine cones are actually the body, so they'll hang upside down, and you'll actually be putting the heads onto the top, and then the wings onto the back, and then you can just add a string to it, and it's a little honey. So that's what we're going to do. Um, so we'll you'll start by taking the felt head and actually picking whatever you're going to use for the hair and glue that on until it's in place. Then you'll glue the acorn hat on top and then attach it to the pine cone and then you'll attach your wings. And there you have, and there you are. So come and play folks. Um, could you grab me whatever scissors we have behind the counter? Yeah. Thank you, darling. You wanna connect the glue guns? 
Oh, no, she won't be at work. Yeah, we can do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a green one. Um, there's one right behind you. Do you want me to grab it for me? Thank you. Did you run with those? I didn't. I thought about it. I got it. It's honest. I liked it. <laughs> okay. Well, with my luck, I know what's up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, but I was like, like ah! Oh, <laughs> something you need. Hey, it was helpful. Thank you. <clears throat> While waiting for the scissors. <laughs> 